Hello all, welcome to Tech Tapture. So in previous video, we had a deep discussion on what is a GKE, what is a container image, what is a managed Kubernetes, what are these in different managed Kubernetes, like GKE, AKS, AKS, and then we saw a different versions of GKE, that is a standard GKE cluster and autopilot GKE cluster. So now we are just moving ahead and in this video, we are going to deploy our first application on autopilot and GK cluster okay so in this video we'll be having a two demos okay so in first demo we'll enable a GK API we'll create a GK autopilot cluster and we'll deploy one public image on a GK cluster so we'll pick one publicly available image so we'll not build our own image we'll just get one of the public image from the docker hub or google documentation and we'll deploy that public image on a gk cluster we'll see how we can deploy any public image on a gk cluster and then when deploy that then we'll expose that deployment with our load balancer service and we'll try to access this application so here this is our first step where we'll build we'll create our gk cluster and deploy a public image and then expose it as a service and then we'll verify if our deployment is working fine or not okay and in second demo will the cluster will be created initially so we'll create our simple python web application we'll create our own docker file we'll build our own docker image and we'll test the docker image is working locally or not if it is working fine locally then we'll create artifact registry push our docker image into artifact registry and from artifact registry we'll just deploy that image on the gk cluster so these two demo we are going to have in this video so in first demo we'll deploy a public image and in second demo we'll build our own container image we'll push it to artifact registry and then deploy it on a gk cluster okay so let's go to a google cloud console and let's start with our first demo I am on my Google Cloud Console to create your first autopilot cluster you have to go to a GKE homepage so either you can go from here all products you can go or you can simply search in the search bar so I'll just search here for Kubernetes okay. and it will show you the Kubernetes engine so click on the Kubernetes engine so it will take you to the home page of the Kubernetes now I am using a Kubernetes engine or GKE in this project for very first time it will ask me to enable the API so this is only one time activity if you are doing it for first time so I'll just enable this and once I enable in this project then I don't need to do it every time so this is only a one time activity so now API is enabled and I am into my GKE homepage so I'll just go to a cluster and let me show you currently we have any cluster or not so currently we do not have any clusters available here so i will first go ahead and create our autopilot cluster to create cluster it will ask you two options here once you create so just click on the create and it will give you two options either autopilot or here the second is standard so default option is autopilot here but if you want to create a standard cluster you can switch to standard cluster but for this demo we have to create autopilot cluster so we'll go with the autopilot so you can see the cluster basics so options we are having so I'll just give you the name auto pilot demo okay region I will keep US central one okay so these things I will keep default the standard tier okay then next fleet registration I will not do a fleet registration for now I'll go to next networking so here also I'll go with the default I will choose a default network okay so we have option here to use other networks as well then I'll go to advanced settings so I don't want any of the advanced setting for now so I'll just go with the review and create and now this will be my all specifications so cluster name will be autopilot demo location will be us central one cluster tier will be standard now if i go back to cluster basics here so you can see you have option only to select the region and not zone so you can create only a regional cluster in autopilot and you do not have option to create a zonal cluster in autopilot but we have option to create a zonal cluster as well if we switch to a standard cluster for now 
we'll go with the regional cluster for autopilot because we have to work on the autopilot demo and in next video we'll work on the standard cluster i'll go to review and create permission so i'll simply create a cluster so i didn't do any kind of customization and with the basic setting i have created my autopilot cluster now it will take a few minutes to create your autopilot cluster and once cluster is created we'll go ahead and deploy our public image on the gke cluster now cluster is still being created we can check the progress of the cluster creation just click on the cluster and here you will see the configuring deploying and health check so you can just wait for some time either it will show any error related to the permissions or networking or if everything is fine it will be successful so just wait for a couple of minutes more and then we'll see if our cluster creation will be successful now cluster is created and it is up and running and it is ready for the deployment but before going and deploying our application on kubernetes cluster what we'll do we'll just try to connect to the cluster and interact using the kubectl command now this kubectl commands are the cli commands which are used to interact with the kubernetes cluster so these are not specific to gk the same set of the kubectl command will be used to interact with the all kubernetes cluster let it be aks clusters in aws or aks clusters in azure kubernetes okay so these commands will be same now i'll just open the cloud shell because the kubectl commands or kubectl will be already installed in my cloud shell so to save the time i'll just open the cloud shell and from the cloud shell i'll just try to interact with the autopilot cluster which we created that is autopilot demo so now i am in my cloud shell let's just verify if we have a kubectl installed here so i'll just execute the command kubectl version and we can see it is installed here so let's try to execute the command first to get the details about the nodes so how many nodes we are having in our cluster so if i do kubectl go get nodes it will throw an error because we haven't set the credential but let me show you the error first so now you can see we are getting error that couldn't get current server api group list and this is the error for timeout because we haven't set any credential to connect to this specific cluster now if i am mentioning kubectl get nodes it is not understanding we are asking about which server okay which cluster not server which kubernetes cluster so i will be having a 10 kubernetes cluster or 5 kubernetes cluster or 2 kubernetes cluster so it is not understanding this command is for which cluster so before that we have to set up the credentials so we can verify if we have a file here so there will be a cube folder okay so if the cube folder is here we'll just verify so you can see currently there is no cube folder and within the cube folder we will have configuration or credential but currently the cube folder or cube config is not available here so how we can set that so in google cloud it given on our console so it one option is there to connect okay so let's click on the connect and we'll have this command to generate the credential to connect to the cluster g cloud container cluster get credential and this is the cluster name cluster region and cluster project so i'll just copy this command and i'll execute here in my okay let me copy correctly i'll just connect and i'll copy then i'll paste it here so what it will do it will just generate the credential and cube config file okay so we can see the cube config entry generated and now we should be seeing this dot cube folder so let me just execute the same command again now you can see it is having the dot cube folder and inside it is having the config file now let's see what this config file is having so i'll just do cat and config so this should be in the cube folder so i'll be doing cd cube slash config okay so this cube config file will be having the credential to connect to the cluster and details about the cluster so this is the certificate data which will be used to connect to the cluster and it is having the details about the cluster so the cluster name you can see the cluster is in gke this is the project this is the region okay this is all related to a cluster information so we can see all details here now let's 
try to execute the same command to get the nodes at least it should not throw an error now. so currently for autopilot cluster we haven't deployed anything so we don't see any nodes available okay but at least our kubectl commands are working fine so now what i will do i'll just try to deploy one public image on my kubernetes cluster now i have a google documentation open here and google provides some public images for testing and deployment so i'll just use one of the image okay so if i go here so google is providing so this image okay so you can either create from the kubectl command or you can do it from a console so first i'll show from the console so i'll just copy this image name okay and here if you go just click on the deploy we'll just make it small here and it will ask you a deployment name so i'll we'll just give the name google sample okay the namespace so we can create a new namespace or we can use a default namespace so i'll just give the default namespace app will be google sample cluster we currently have only one cluster we we'll go with autopilot and then container details now here instead of deploying the default nginx i'll use a google provided image so this is my image name and this is the tag okay so let's click on a done and now i'll i'll not do anything like expose or anything for now i'll first deploy it okay so it will just deploy our application so it will take a couple of minutes to create a deployment and deploy our application now it should complete and we can see our deployment is completed and you can see google sample deployment is complete so sometimes it takes time first sometimes it will show you pod suspending or a red symbol here but it takes around 1 to 2 minutes to come to the pods in the running state so now we will go ahead okay here and let's again execute the same command and check how many nodes are available kubectl go to get nodes and now it created two nodes you can see it created two nodes so we haven't mentioned how many node we need but based on the requirement it created a two node so because this options is available in standard cluster that we can specify required number of nodes and auto scaling but here it is the inbuilt feature of the autopilot cluster that we don't need to specify number of nodes or number of resources we need and it will just scale up and scale down the resources based on the requirement now this will be the node if we go to a compute engine if i show you a vm instance you won't see any instance here because in autopilot you will not have access to these autopilot nodes which you are seeing here so you will not be having a direct access to these nodes okay so that is one again major difference in autopilot cluster so let's check the overview you can see the active revision because we only deployed one so there is only one revision manage pod so let's see again the pods here as well i'll just do a get pods so we'll see the three pods are running for our application now application is deployed but how we can access our application so to access our application we need some external ip to access on the browser so for that we have to expose our deployment to the internet so here you have see you can see the option and it is showing to let other access your deployment expose it to create a service so we'll expose a deployment as a service and here we will be using the load balancer service so target port i'll choose 8080 because application running on 8080 and here we have a three option service one is cluster ip when we want to service expose service on internal ip this is expose the service on the same port for each of the selected node and this is create load balancer with external ip so we need external ip we'll go here and the name will just give a google sample service will expose this deployment as a service so it will take a couple of minute to expose our service and once it is created the service will have one endpoint with a external ip 
and then we'll try to access our application on the external IP so if no firewall is blocking the traffic we should be accessing our application and if it is facing timeout issue then we'll just open the firewall on the port 80 okay so let's wait for some time and then once the service is created we'll try to access our application on the external IP created in a service now you can see the service is created so this is a Google sample service and it is having the port 80 target port 8080 so now we'll go back to workload okay and in workload again we'll go to Google sample and let's see it should not show the expo service message now and at the end you will see this uh, endpoint now let me go and try to access our service on the endpoint so let's go here and now you can see we are able to access our application so it is showing hello world message version 1.001 hostname so these are the public image we deployed and this image is having this message on the application now we can see the deployed service using the kubectl command as well so we can just execute the command kubectl get service okay and you can see it just having the load balancer service and this is the external IP here which we are accessing on the port 80 okay. so now hope you understand how to deploy the public image on the GK cluster on autopilot cluster now what we'll do we'll just create our own sample Python web application we'll build our own container image we'll just push dash container image to artifact registry and then just we'll try to deploy that container image on the autopilot cluster so end to end we are going to do it in our second demo so this video is already longer so we'll just deploy our own application with our own container image in our next video so thank you for watching this video and we'll see you again in our next video